Thank you so much. I'm Sabine Breitwies. I'm very pleased to moderate this talk uh, with uh, Tracy Rose and Sam Durant. And we uh, both artists will do a little presentation before we start and talk about race and justice. So, Sam, I think you have some slides, right? Sure. Yeah, we could. Both um, have a work here in the parkour section, just to remember. Uh, Sam has the labyrinth made from in 2015, installed first in Philadelphia, now at the Münster Square. Trace has a performance with Chris Martin on the Ritterstrasse, I think. That's the address where you are. In a very uh, peculiar place, a uh, garden in front of a house. And yeah. Uh -huh. I've got okay. the images. Yeah. Here are the images. Um, yeah, I'll just, I'll just describe the work. I was invited in, in 2014 to do a project in the city of Philadelphia um, uh, by an organization called Mural Arts, which is a public art uh, uh, and, and uh, uh, education and, and social, uh, social work organization uh, that does a lot of work in prisons. And they, they, they started a, a, a public art project uh, to deal with the issue of mass incarceration. Um, so uh, they work with a group of uh, men in the prison nearby, uh, the Greater Fruit State Prison, um, and I worked for about a year with these men in, um, in Greater Fruit uh, in, a, in a collaboration. I had no preconceived idea. I came and asked them, I said, we have a site in the middle of the city um, amongst all the civic institutions, the city hall, the courts, all these buildings, the American history, uh, the constitution was written in Philadelphia, so a very important place historically. Um, and, and they came up with this idea of the, the labyrinth. They, one of the men said, when you get, in, when you get arrested and get um, pulled into the criminal justice system, it's like a labyrinth, which you never get out of. And so we started talking about the idea of the labyrinth that um, uh, first of all, it comes from, from Greece, and we talked about the idea of democracy um, originating uh, in Greece and now manifesting in the United States. The relationship, obviously, of freedom and unfreedom with the issue of so many people. Um, you know, many of you probably know in the United States we imprison more people than any country in the world. Um, and it's obviously there's highly racially skewed. The, the disparity in um, African-American and Latino incarceration rates is enormous. And so it's a, it's a, it's a real emergency. Um, and so just in going to the prison and discussing um, uh, what we could do with these, with these men who turned out to be um, quite a powerful and moving experience for me, um, uh, they were incredible. Uh, they were, it was like having a PhD seminar. Um, they were obviously guys that uh, were cho choosing to live, in a sense, choosing to really deal with what had happened in their life and do everything they could to um, maintain their lives and their energy. And, and that was quite evident. Anyway, they, they wanted to be visible on the outside, so they, we, we came up with the idea of a kind of memorial space. Um, and by using the chain link fencing, obviously we're referencing um, uh, all the issues of, of um, incarceration, of separation, of all these, these kinds of things. But it also makes a really easy space to attach things to. And so working with a number of groups and civic groups in the city, um, we opened it up for people to contribute um, anything they wanted, basically, to the, to the fence. And gradually, as the contributions filled in the fencing, the, the labyrinth went from being uh, transparent to being opaque. Um, and so through these different things, and many of these came from prisoners all over the state and even all over the country, but many came from family members. And uh, I mean, it turns out in, in Philadelphia, especially almost everybody you come in contact with has somebody, a friend or a family member or a relation who's in the criminal justice system one way or another. So uh, it, it, it was a quite a interesting combination of a lot of things. Uh, 
And then uh, maybe we can talk about it a little bit later. What, why bring it here to Basel? So let's continue with Tracy. You have a piece here called False Flag. I did in two acts and you have a video you want to present and maybe you also share a little bit with us uh, what your piece you're doing here, which is a performative sculpture, which is developing over the days, as I understood it. Um, so we know, we know a little bit more about it. Okay. I'd prefer to show the video first. Okay. And then we can talk about it. As you wish. Yeah. Sure. Cool. Can we have the video? Uh, give some context. Yeah. Maybe. So yeah. just, just hold the video for a second. Okay. okay. Um, just to give you some context to the video, could you just pause there for a second? Sorry about that. Thanks. Um, this uh, piece uh, is entitled um, The Cancho. Or, um, um, it's, a, it's just a, a fragment from um, an artist talk that I was basically forced to do or contract contractually forced to do, as, as most of the artists who were on the exhibition, uh, that was entitled Global Feminisms. Um, I selected this piece just because of the, 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 the title of, of this talk, which is Race and Justice, and this was um, probably the most racist exhibition I've ever taken part in. Um, anyway, so just to give you that foundation to look at the piece. You can play it now, thanks. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what <clears throat> you are about to hear are not necessarily the views of the artist. Hmm, hmm, did you say it? I spoke it with you. Did you hear why she said why she would not show her work. She said, she said, if she was a man, she would not have to be a tour guide. She said that she shows her work not to be seen. She shows her work <coughs> to be seen, not to be explained by her. Oh, but there's lots of artists here. Yes, Adrian Piper is here. No, she is not. Yes, she is. No, she is dead. She is dead. Yes, Barbara Kruger killed her. <laughs> oh, I had no idea. So, what are we doing here? They needed some color. And besides, it was a movement for white women. They said they were fighting men. But they give birth to white men. They marry them. They fuck them. They love them. They are their brothers, their fathers, their lovers, their sons. They educate white men. So, who's the oppressor? So, have you seen the show? I think we can stop nope. the video. Too crowded. Uh, that, that piece goes on to talk about um, a whole range of um, women of color who, from America who were not involved in the exhibition. And uh, you know, when, I, when, I was, when I received the invitation, um, I asked around for, for um, some friends. I was like, is Bell Hooks involved? Is Adrian Piper involved? 
um, and uh, Coco Fusco, and everybody was like, no, no, and they were like, stay away from these people, they're evil. And I was like, no, I got the invitation, I'm gonna go into the heart of the demon. So, um, I decided I was going to make a statement, and not even make a statement, I actually wasn't gonna sabotage, I actually wanted to blow up the fucking place, I was so fucking angry and insulted. Um, the, the, just, the in institution itself was basically, what it had done was, it's the Elizabeth Sackler Center for Contemporary Art. I think they've vindicated themselves in the process. But this was their sort of opening exhibition. And they'd invited an absurd amount of artists. I think there, were, there was something in the region of like 39 or f between 39 and 62 or something uh, from all over the world. And we were told to, um, as compensation for, um, not, uh, yeah. Because they'd flown us over and they'd accommodate, accommodated us in a, in a hotel in downtown New York um, without per diems and without artist fees, we were expected to give these artist talks um, without compensation. Um, and I was so thoroughly insulted at the level of hypocrisy that we were invited to this feminist show, a woman of color from all over the world, people who had children, who had families, um, and you know, you weren't even paid for your, for your service. You were, we were basically enslaved in this whole sort of system. And it was just like, you know, again, it was kind of the, 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 the oppression just basically having the same gender, but, you know, a different race. Um, and at the time, I had, some, I had really strong gallerists. I have uh, some pretty strong gallerists now. Too. Um, at the time, Christian Hay um, and of the project in New York and uh, Linda Givon at the Goodman Gallery in Johannesburg were my gallerists. So, I was quite arrogant and quite um, uh, gung-ho about my, my work. So with Christian, he pushed me further. And so, you know, um, one of, you know, so, so a lot of my work was incredibly confrontational. And um, it, it, at the time, I was also, in, it was sort of pre-suicide pre bombing, kind of the ubiquitous nature. Suicide bombing. We would we would say we'd suicide bomb. We'd go into spaces and kind of, you know, um, try and try and be as 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 beyond provocative as, as, as possible, literally sort of blow up the space with our presence in order to kind of generate some kind of effect, that catharsis or reaction or whatever. Um, and that was the nature of the performance process. And since this work has evolved, it's, it was in 2007 when I did the piece, um, and um, there's several versions that have existed. Anyway, um, is that okay about talking about that one? Do you want to go? Yeah. Speak about Maybe you speak a little bit about the piece you're presenting here. Okay. And then we speak about the context. All right. Uh, <laughs> this is the eighth edition of 95, of a, a series that, of, that's going to be 95 of um, editions of uh, sculptures um, titled or um, dedicated to Nelson Mandela. They call the Mandela Balls. Um, and they... He lived for 95 years, so, so this is sort of where, where, where why, you know, each one is autonomous and has a specific kind of, um, I don't know, whatever. There's, each one's specific. Sorry, just, just to let you know, I'm in the midst of doing a, a, a performance. It's like eight hours a day. So this is kind of in the middle of it. So to switch um, frameworks from being in performance mode into being like kind of you know, a more kind of, um, logical yeah. s space is, is, is slightly challenging. So, <laughs> um, uh, I kind of like to get back to speaking about this. I haven't really processed that. Maybe we just describe what people envision when they uh, visit the site. I mean, essentially, when I'm saying Mandela Ball, you're thinking it, of Mandela testicles. And yeah. essentially, you know, I mean, the, the, the work is, is about um, a black male's test testes, you know, um, and the evolution of that. And you know, in each of my works, you know, I've had, you know, it's, you know, thematically this all falls into, into, into race and justice, which I think is also a little bit retarded uh, themes for artists to take on because um, for us to articulate these things verbally, you know, I, mean, I think we deal with such enormous issues, you know, and they're also quite emotionally complicated. So to, you know, to kind of bring it down into, into sort of a comprehensive elements, I think that, you know, you know, writers, art historians, so those, those are the people that should be more articulate about it. But um, on the most sort of base level, um, it's just references to the exploitation of, 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 of the black male body, you know, in no matter what uh, position of power um, they are, they're ultimately impotent. Okay.
Thank you both. So maybe we just start uh, right away with the, ty with the subject of this conversation, which is race and justice. And I was wondering about how you feel about this connection and my immediate uh, stereotypical <laughs> uh, um, uh, relation was, of course, that you with your fans and working with the prisoners are related to justice and you representing race, the apartheid. Yeah, oh, really? it's a very, yeah, of course, very stereotypical, as I said. <laughs> However, oh. since you're two, they're two tall, I wonder how, how you feel about this connection, because as you obviously articulated um, a critique about being put in an all women show as a, a women of color. So how do you feel about being put in a talk which is about race and justice, or how you feel about that as an American I, with your background and with your work, you have uh, been brought from the United States here. So I thought that might be interesting. Since these are projects in public space, or quasi-public space, which usually relates to the context of a site, I was wondering how you feel about that and your thoughts and concerns about that. I mean, ultimately, I mean, in, uh, with, with that, uh, that, that show at the Brooklyn Museum, mm -hmm. um, that was all white women who curated the exhibition. Um, so ultimately, you know, it's... Uh, you know, has, who has the power, who has the financial power that ultimately determines what, what you know, what we, are we talking about race and justice in the art world? Are we talking about race and justice This is generally? a subject of you know, our conversation. You know what I mean? It's like, it's it, because, you know, it's, that's really what it boils down to, isn't it? It's ultimately who has the, the strings and capital that kind of can decide what also gets well, seen. I do, you mentioned Adrian Piper, I do believe artists do have power. They can say yes or no. Uh, you just mentioned artist who likes to say no. If she's not, I mean, Adrian is famous for refusing participating, but maybe let's hear from Sam, because that's a piece you developed in a certain context, in a certain environment, in relation with well, special people, and now it's here in Basel at yeah. the Münster, and I'm sure you've thought about it. I mean, one, you know, one thing that's funny is often I, I do talks places, and people are shocked to see that I'm actually white. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I thought you were gay, and then I thought you were black. Yeah. I mean, I was, or or, or that I'm Karl Marx or something like that. Could like be. You never know. Big and bushy, you know. Yeah. It's funny that, how you get these <laughs> reputations. But, uh, but no, Adrian, I mean, it's great that you mentioned two people that are really important for me. Adrian Piper, who actually changed my life uh, and showed me that, so um, <laughs> yeah, that, that actually art does change people. And change things. But you know, and like Adrian Piper is like one person. I mean, Lorena Grady's been a lot, been around mm -hmm. for so mm -hmm. long and working Howard so Dina hard. Pindell. You know, like so many people, so many black mm -hmm. artists. Who, you know, I was actually, I actually, when I when I got the invitation, um, I, I was actually speaking to Christian about it, and I was like, you know, I don't know if I can do, uh, do that. I don't even know uh, Sam's Sam's work. So he's like, no, no, you do, you do. Uh, and he showed me the picture of, um, you know, the one that's based on the uh, Huey Newton. Um, uh, Black, the Black Panther the photo right, with the, a really good the looking... The $5 bill with Adrian, uh, with uh, Adrian Piper, yeah. <laughs> if only she were on the $5 bill. Yeah. Although we're getting Sojourner Truth, which is amazing. Um, I wonder what you think of that. We're going to have Sojourner Truth you on You know what, like line. American politics is just like way too fucking much for me. I got my own yeah, issues in Africa. A, like for no. real, like seriously. I think you guys haven't even dealt with your Native American exactly. Holocaust, not genocide, Holocaust. You know, and That's for right. me it's like karma, what's getting back to you all of you all that, that time. And I really got my own African issues to deal with and I can't deal with America. Yeah, really. no, exactly. I mean, so, it's, it's, we need a Truth and Reconciliation uh, Commission. We haven't gone through that yet. Haven't yeah, through and that you yet. may have somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> so, but maybe let's talk about the power of the artists. What can artists do? You spoke about how uh, young people put in prison became artists. You have been helping them to be become visible. Yeah, I mean, I, well, you know, that was a big uh, learning experience for me. Um, I mean, of course, I've I've known about the issue for a long time, sort of abstract, disconnected. Um, but uh, to work with incarcerated people and also people coming out of the system trying to re-integrate uh, back into society was, you know, people who go into pr prison, especially in, in, in Philadelphia and the black communities, they've never had a job. They don't even know what it means to get up in the morning and go to work every day. They go into prison before they get, but when they come out in their 20s and 30s, I mean, the 
the possibility of even but it's, it's living is very Sam. difficult. It's neo-slavery, It's neo-slavery. That's exactly. all it is. It's a plantation. That's really yeah. what it is. The prison system is ultimately the, the, the plantation system. Exactly. That's really what it is. Yeah, and then, you know, Michelle Alexander's book, The New Jim Crow, which thankfully is getting a lot of attention, and even in the mainstream, which this is her point, the prison system is just the extension of slavery. It's a temporary uh, model of how we deal with this unwanted population. Um, but, you know, I mean, like the, all the guys in the prison, they, are, they know Michelle Alex. They know all this stuff. They're way more educated than anybody on the, the outside, let's say. And, you know, I mean, there's a personal dimension, which is the tragedy of losing so many people in, into this system, where there's, there, were, there have been points in the, in the U.S. history where there's more young black men in the prison system than in the college system, the education system. So you know, you know what frustrates me a lot about having grown up in a, in a society where there was a lot of activist art and a lot of the activist art was, that got prominence was by white South African artists. Mm. Um, and, and so there was almost like a kind of vindication for, for what they were doing because of, of what they were producing, which wasn't actually a lived experience, you mm. know. Um, and, yeah, oh God, oh, I actually to myself right now. No, this is, that's a good question because... Um, you know, that, that comes up a lot. Like, oh, the sheep. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I'm not, for, first of all, I'm not trying to speak for anyone else. And, uh, you know, that would be ridiculous. Um, the other thing is that my audience is primarily white America. And I think this is a really important thing. Actually, the problem of race is a white problem. And we don't deal with it. And so that's really my audience. And that's who, the primary audience. I think anybody can get uh, meaning and, uh, out of the work, but that's the primary audience. But are they a consuming audience? Like a, like a you know, do they consume, or, or are they, are you educating them? Are you shifting them? Are they just buying your product? Like, uh, you know, because. Oh, well, that's a good question. Yeah. For all of us. <laughs> so in yeah. your case, the que I mean, both you work with performative, in your case, are you with participation? Have you ever thought about questioning who is the author of your labyrinth the, the author yes who's the yeah author? it's it's a collaboration mm -hmm. yeah definitely a collaboration. but you don't name the collaborators well, in, or you are yeah, not allowed I mean, how is it that's but that them? was an issue that we talked about like how how sh you know what is this that we're doing and that was a big discussion about how to title it how to name it and you know Guys in the in the in the prison, the artist group that was there, you know, they they felt like, well, you know, you're the artist, and if you should put your name on, like this is what you're doing. They consider yes, you as the artist, although they were well, they the they because they want us they're, they're artists as well, and they want a separation between what I'm doing, and what they're doing. So they 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 see, you know, they can get something out of the work, but. Um, at the same time, they want to be recognized themselves, which they can do to a limited degree through the internet. Um, I had some interesting experience when uh, visiting your piece yesterday. I saw a group of young black male people standing in front and watching this with obviously, I could just guess, it was a social worker, woman, someone who took care of them and they were watching this. And when I was... Um, attending your piece, I entered with a, a young girl who dared to enter unless I went first. <laughs> so she really felt she gets kind of trapped. So, however, it's pretty clear both are very experiential. Yours is different because it unfolds differently every day. As I understood uh, from you, there's kind of a narrative you're developing every day and yours also varies depending on, of course, the people. And, and as I understood it, this was really sort of a mapping of the experience the prisoners felt they have to share with the outer world. While, how is that with you, the participatory aspect and the experiential side in your piece? Because you, you develop it without a script, right? Yeah. A basic script. You've got a, yeah. oh, no, a script. A we've got a basic idea of what, what it is. Um, we you have an image, sort of, as I understood, yeah, yeah, you yeah, want right, to right, right. perform, when I, when right? I, when I was in space, because initially I was going to use 
space that was actually quite um, quite quite heavy. It was quite quite sort of dark and it was a, a, a top of a mountain. You said what was it? Uh, I yeah. think it was the top of a mountain because <laughs> I had to go up a hill. Um, but um, and it had uh, archways and uh, sort of paintings on the wall and uh, the the what I'd um, conceptualized for that space or envisioned for that space was something was more kind of a basis of of uh, Salo. Um, Hello, by Pasolini. Yes, right? by yeah. Pasolini. Yes, and um, and uh, and then I came to do a recce with uh, Samuel and Dan, and we walked around the space on the park horse route, and um, you know, Samuel quite, was 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 uh, pushing for for the space that we're in right now, which is a lot more sort of delicate, a lot more gentler. And I sat in the space, and I kind of waited to 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 find it, you know, for myself, and. Uh, uh, eventually, uh, I got this picture of uh, Christopher, uh, Christopher, Christopher Martin um, uh, falling out of this big ball um, and, you know, interacting with it. And, and so that was sort of the start of, of that, that piece. That, that, that was basically the shift. Um, and you, oh God, you asked me something that I really wanted to ask. The participatory aspect and the yeah. shared experience, right. because I think that's very much about, although yeah, yeah. there was a fence outside, people yeah. stood. I yeah, mean, I mean, you know, it, 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 for, for me, it, it, it fluctuates. Um, on one level, I get incredibly romantic about it, and I think of it as an art object, and I, I, I love the movement of, of, of the piece just aesthetically, uh, you know, without any of the sort of loaded, you know, polit political issues or whatever that comes with it. And then on the other, I get um, incredibly fucking iris uh, frustrated and irritated by what I perceive to be an audience uh, lack of awareness or, or sort of consciousness and I start to feel like we are monkeys in a in, in a you know in a cage you know and you know I'd, I'd already I've uh, the last um, uh, what well, well in uh, 2014 I think it was uh, art fair in Miami I'd uh, done a, a performance piece at uh, Dan Gunn's um, booth uh, which was based on um, on um, on the well, the reference it wasn't based on. It was, sorry, it was it referenced the Berlin Fair of uh, 1896, uh, the mm -hmm. the World Fair where they imported um, a lot of Africans, who were, a lot of, of whom were diplomats and chiefs, to be on display, and um, a lot of people died of exposure to the cold, and. Um, so, so you know, um, in a sense, it's you know, for me, it's it's, it's again another sort of platform without the the sort of the, the romance of you know of art. It's just it's just as just as an aesthetic, just as just as a, as an object, without it just appreciating just the beauty of it, without with with you know without having to think about all those other sort of connotations about it kind of being located in in, in you know in in Switzerland, the the place with probably the most gold in the world that doesn't have a single gold mine, you know, um, <laughs> you know it, this incredibly kind of loaded history, you know. Gold mines are called banks here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, however, the images were extremely strong you created, while your was kind of an abstraction, I feel, of a sort of an emotional experience. Yours was uh, uh, kind of emphasizing the emotion through images. It reminded me on Bosch. We men mentioned Bosch and Bruegel today, but also surrealism a lot, this kind of idea of birth out of uh, Mandela's. So I mean, uh, quite literal in a way, and you in your wedding dress, which obviously the place, as I read, is a sort of popular site for wedding photographs, right? So this is obviously something you knew about, or so however, there was kind of a role play going on, right? Yeah, the thing is also with performance, sometimes you can, um, 100% of the 50%, because the other 50% is really what makes the work, which is completely unexpected. And so um, that's kind of where we are, because it's, the piece is evolving, because it's such a long, um, it takes it's a long time to, to kind of, um, yeah, to complete. Um, uh. <laughs> <laughs> How you develop your piece. But maybe we can talk a little bit, because there are different ways you develop it. You developed it at the site and then translated the, as a kind of transformed the a sculpture out of it and uh, moved it here while you develop your piece at site. And I think that's kind of, could be interesting to talk about these different methodologies, how you do a piece which is relating, relating yeah. to... Well, um, for me, you know, um, 
doing work that's explicitly political, uh, you know, limits your exhibition chances. Um, mm -hmm. There's only so many places um, that, that want to work with that type of work. So I tend to try and take advantage of <laughs> every, um, not every, but most, as many as I can, uh, opportunity. And, you know, one of the things I learned working with things that have to do with um, American uh, culture, American context, history, uh, coming to Europe is it, it's, you know, when you change, when you shift the context, you know, there's, there's usually something interesting that happens, something productive for the audience place, even though it's not, it no longer is specifically about the history in Switzerland and things like that. Um, and, and now we were talking about this earlier, um, you have all the countries in Western Europe really dealing with uh, the issue of, of migration and the refugees coming from, from uh, North Africa and the Levant and the Middle East. So, um, and that's, there's an incredible pressure on the society here. A, a very, you know, what's been up to now, a fairly homogenous, uh, you know, Eurozone, let's say. Um, and so I think the piece has a kind of connection and a resonance. Again, as you said, there's, it's a kind of abstraction. And, and the other thing that I, I see that happens often in, in it's always de easier to deal with somebody else's problem. Yeah. And that can often actually open a door in a less defensive way to rethinking about your own. Mm -hmm. So I've had some conversations a couple of days that it's been up with people, Europeans, you know, thinking about it in relation to the issue going on here. Which, you know... Migration issues, yeah, yeah of course, we have exactly. these images of people standing yeah. next to fences and yeah. want to get in um, from the southern sphere of our globe. Paul Karma. <laughs> yes, uh, Fortress Europe. It's kind of an ongoing thing since the 90s. Yeah, we do learn, of course, from uh, importing or um, experiencing things which are slightly different. However, we do experience in Europe this discussion about the privatization of prisons or yeah. the whole public sphere issue. So what you all both share is this politi politicization of the body, I think, in both ways. So you look at the body as sort of uh, um, the pr prison body, the limited body, also mentally, uh, from uh, sort of uh, giving people a presence, a language. You uh, deal uh, with your agenda, I would say, which, which is race, obviously. Oh, this is no. my agenda. Hell fucking no. Fuck, I'm not so limited. My God. So what is it? No, fucking no. I'm a fucking human person. I'm not Hopefully. a fucking race. I'm a human racist, if anything, but that's it. Like, no, I don't fucking deal with race. Get it straight, people. I don't fucking deal with race. That's your issues. You deal with it. You know, I look at it humanity. Gave, I look uh, at things. I, I, you know, my work comes through me. It comes from another place, you know? I don't deal with it. I don't deal with it. I give it to you, you deal with it. You know, I'm not the creator of it. You are. You created it, you take it back. So, you know, and that's, that's part of it. I mean, I feel like my work is just really me channeling. I don't actually create any of my fucking work. It gets given to me. You know, it's a deeply profound But you do, it, you do it in collaboration with Chris in this I, Well, case? in this particular yeah. work, yeah. yeah. But I collaborate yeah. with lots of people. I do, uh, you know, before, at one point, when I was working with a lot of people, I didn't... Um, um, I didn't credit them as much as I've started to because I realized that, you know, what, what I absolutely loved was working with people was it was so spiritually lucrative, I used to mm -hmm. say that, because it was just the generosity of people when you start working with them, you know, people have never had attention. You know, um, one of my first performance pieces was in uh, Cape Town, the National Art Gallery, and I worked with a parole prisoner from Baltimore, and I just met him like two days before the, the, the performance piece. And I mean, I, I was, you know, I was, I was getting like a paltry, like artist fee and uh, I was trying to support him myself, paying him for, for, for making the work on that. And he, um, and uh, yeah, so, I mean, you know, from a, from a art exploitative position, I'm actually like really embarrassed about that. But I was really young, I was like 23 and I didn't really know any better. But um, he also upped the days. He started working three days, which is what I could afford. And he said to me, he really wants to work five days. So I went and I got a job in Johannesburg so that I could pay his salary. And um, he had an, he'd been in jail from the age of 17 to the age of 28. And um, it sounds kind of 
um, pity in a sense to say it, but it was actually the most attention that he'd ever gotten in his mm -hmm. life. Like just, you know, being in the space. There was some, you know, there was, and that was all I could give him. That was absolutely all I, I was a kid, you know, that was, I, that, I didn't understand the full, 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 full gamut of, of, of what that meant, you know, until years later, you know. Um, so he got attention while he was well, in I say he got prison. attention. I mean, like, here's, here's somebody who was just completely anonymous, who didn't exist to society. This is a colored man who went to jail for armed robbery uh, because he, he was actually, like, I don't know if he was riding the car or whatever, but he wasn't holding the gun. He's, he didn't even know it was going to happen, and he went to jail. And, you know, I mean, back, this is, you know, this is almost 20 years ago. Um, for me to take that on when I was a kid, I'm, you know, so I was a kid. I was, you know, it was the first, second chance would be an all. Um, and I had him carving my memories, you know, um, into, into the gallery wall. And yeah, I am this middle class, you know, colored Catholic kid from Durban, moved to Johannesburg. I mean, I got my own personal history and my own kind of baggage. And, you know, I've got him carving these sort of memories. I mean, you know, and also, you know, because the thing is, Within South African structure, because you have all of these 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 complications regarding race. I mean, you know, South Africa was a neo-Nazi state. If and that that you know the, the man who who constructed apartheid was trained um, in Austria um, uh, in in yeah in a Nazi institution, and he came back and basically what he did was create a neo-Nazi haven. Heaven, you know. Um, and I always used to say that, you know, apartheid was not uh, racial warfare, it was spiritual warfare, because what it does is, you know, it, um, it incarcerates the body to enslave the mind, to assassinate the spirit. Because that's really what it's about. It's about absolute spiritual destruction, like prisons, like all of these things, you know. And art is the only sort of vehicle I've found to, to find a way to actually um, mend that wound, you know. It's, um, so... Um, so, yeah, anyway, you asked me about race. <laughs> <laughs> and the politicized body, or maybe I should have asked you about racism. I mean, that's oh, because no. Adrian Piper is someone completely I make art, I don't, I don't this. illustrate theory, darling. Of course I, you, you don't. Know, you know, I the theory not. comes after, you know. It's, you know, my work's about so much more, absolutely so much more, you know. And I think once we get past the progression of also those things, but also, you know, <sighs> yeah, anyway, that's not my job. But maybe you can uh, um, work a little bit on this idea of collaboration with Chris. I'm interested about that, how you collaborate, which is obviously since a while with some breaks. How, you, how, do, how did you develop the performance? You came up with a sculpture and you had a conversation. I mean, I'm just trying to find out how you work with other people to develop. I have an idea how you do it. Uh, have, collaboration. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I mean, I, it's, it's something I really have only come to recently. I'm much more of an old school traditionalist. I feel Judy like artist. a 19th century <laughs> dinosaur, actually. But I like that. I like working alone. I'm a loner by, by nature, so it suits me. Collaborating is a stretch for me, but um, I try to do it in a way that says, I don't know, acknowledging the power structures that it exists between me and whoever I'm collaborating with, being upfront about that and clear about that, uh, acknowledging what I get out of it mm -hmm. and what my collaborator gets out of it. And, you know, um, and, and putting that out there in the beginning and you know, being honest and real about all of the structures as, as one can be. You know? um, Nothing's perfect, I, I guess I would say. It's, it's a negotiation, it's, a, it's all gray area, um, and one, one tries to learn from each experience. And does this affect you, how you continue to develop your work, oh, these yeah, kind of experiences? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I mean, like I say, I like, I'm doing a, a two other public projects right now, one in Massachusetts and one in Mexico City, again, working with collaborators. Uh, in very different ways, um, but I'm also doing the work I always do in the studio at the same time. So, I, for me, it's like a, uh, an opportunity to expand a way of working. You mentioned also that you Probably use... Probably not a good career uh, move. ...that you use projects like this as a platform to uh, develop work or communicate works you might not be able to do in the United States, for instance. 
because Europe is maybe more open for certain Sure, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the work I did in Documenta five, five years ago, uh, I tried for uh, several years to do in the U.S., but, but couldn't get it cited or funded. Um, once it was shown in, in, in Europe, it, the interest and so forth was generated from, for the U.S. side. So, it come to, so that's another way that this interaction works. Mm -hmm. I mean, I suppose, uh, anyway. How is it for you? Is it meaningful for you to show your work in a context where you're not daily acting in and can use this as a platform for your work you're interested to do? Like here in Europe, showing in Europe, in Basel, is this helpful for you, for your work? It's the same everywhere? Or? Same everywhere, yeah. Yeah. Special. Don't you think <laughs> it's just work? It's just it's just an, another work that needs to get made. But work has a different meaning in different locations, in yeah, different contexts. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And each time a work gets reconceived or reconsidered for each site and each location. And even you know? in your case, you do it every hour. There's a different. Yeah. Well, I mean, this piece. I mean, there's there's been other pieces that have been constant, you know, and the the repetition is you know has been the same. Mm -hmm. um, um, like the piece uh, Nigga Kafakun that was pro that was uh, produced for Art Basel Miami, mm -hmm. um, and then there's you know I, I, yeah there's too many works to speak of, but um, yeah no each work is, is is different because each context is, especially when it, when it's a site specific work, so you know the the when I was younger I I, I used to be um, obsessive about just finding out absolutely everything I would go and research the location this is pre internet you know going to the library researching you know even if it was a, it was a group exhibition I wanted to find out who the artists were that were on the show, you know where they came from what their work was like so I knew also how to position my work in that exhibition in order to also comment on. You know, so. But every artwork for me was, a, was, was an act of war. I was going into battle for everything. You've got to understand, I was, I was probably, um, Mashekwa Lang and I were the only two kids, essentially, sort of turn of this last century, coming out of South Africa. We were like, you know, these two young kids in, in the contemporary art world when you know, sort of the world stage was sort of opening up and traveling for the past 20 years, you know, two suitcases and that. You know, shouting at the world, um, only because I was really lucky. I was I was able to stay with my parents for, well, I still am, but you know, <laughs> and 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 that was a security I had. My my mom always said to me, you know, don't compromise your work, and so that's what I did. I never compromised my work, and you know, to my detriment to a lot of a lot of the time, and you know, each work is 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 an important uh, locator in in not just my history, but in you know, art history. I used to tell my students, you don't just make art, you make history, and you've got an incredible responsibility in, in what you do and what you're gonna leave behind, you know. You know, it's not, this is not fucking decor. People died for my, for my right to speak. People died, you know. Babies were throwing stones at tanks. <laughs> and they're still doing so, and I'm thinking, fuck. Art does fuck all. Art does fuck all. You fucking people go, you fucking do your fucking stupid fucking exhibitions with your fucking theme park fucking artists and fucking theme park art and you talk about shit that doesn't fucking shift shit. It doesn't fucking change anything. And people come in, the same people who fucking cause this shit come in and buy your fucking work. And I fucking cannot stand artist, art hypocrisy. And I despise it. And it breaks my fucking heart because I actually thought it was much more than what it is. So that's... That's where I'm That's at. your conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe there are some questions at that point from the audience to the artists. And I think we do have a microphone, right? Yeah. Or was the conclusion just too strong? <laughs> Sam. <laughs> Nothing Hi, yet. Sam. You mentioned a project you're doing in Mexico. Can you tell us what that is? Are you allowed to talk about it? Or? Well, yeah, I, it's, um, yeah, I probably shouldn't say too much yet. Uh, it'll, it'll, starting next week. <laughs> next week. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it involves some um, sort of handmade signs throughout the city. Um, very interesting. What's the context? It's not insight or... No, no it's, it's, another... it's, a, it's a foundation there that does kind of education art um, mm -hmm. in the city. They're, they're very low profile. They don't do any advertising or City. They just work with artists to do things in the city, and um, there they are, and no one sort of takes credit for it. There's no PR with it. 
So no, it's an interesting... No big wall label. Yeah, you'll never no. hear about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's, which is an interesting thing. But I, 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 had a, I did have one question, actually, or maybe a comment for, for Tracy. Um, do you th I mean, I think it's important that your work registers um, institutional. And because, although I, I, I totally get what you're saying, I think also, um, you know, it's important that it is historicized, that it is remembered, because then it becomes something for younger people. If there's nothing there, if it's a void, what do you cling to? What, what do you look to? You know, and, I, and so, I mean, I agree with you, the urgency of the situation is dire when you take a look at what people are going through. But in the long run, and I think it is a long run that we're all part of, you, you know, human biological history, evolutionary no, history. Let's talk about white supremacy when you talk about because that's a fucking decision. That's a fucking decision. And who actually owns yeah, of that? Course. You know, but that's really what it is. Ultimately, whenever we talk about race, we never talk about justice, we're talking about a white male system, essentially. You know, that's really yeah. what it is, at the crux yeah. of everything. And we can talk about how humanity needs to, fuck all needs to fucking change with humanity. You, people you, are good people. They're in shitty situations. That's the bottom line. Yeah, but you do know? you think that you're, it's important that your work uh, be historicized, be included, be written we, about. You know, it, you know, yeah, all of that, it's wonderful. It's, it's really wonderful. And for my ego, it's, it's, it's fantastic, you know. Um, you know, and that's, yeah. that's part of the art exploitation. Uh, you know, you have galleries and dealers to deal with, with the actual matter of, of what, 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 the work, what the work does in other sort of, you know, spaces where it becomes a you know pub, uh, published, where you know in a, in, a, in a book form, where those are, th are things that unless I produce an artwork that's a book, I'm not going to do because I'm actually more interested in what I'm doing right now. And you know, of course, these things that you know, this is documented. You know, this is on the internet. This going to you know what I mean. So, yeah. so so you know, I'm, I'm not working to, for, for for the work to be historicized as a as an object in a museum that can just be contemplated. You know, 200 years from now. You know, it's, it's important for me to shift landscapes now. It's, that's what's important. You know, in my lifetime, I'm not fucking working to be, you know. Um, oh, God, there was something I was thinking of about. Um, Sorry. Sorry. Something I was thinking about. Um, Yes, this was it. This, this was this was it. Um, a, a, a while ago, I I switched off from the art world for, for for a bit. I mean, a while ago, I came across the term. Everybody's using it now. Um, artworks and are, are called projects. I was furious. I was like, I, you know, I'm an artist from the project. Christian Hay in Harlem. I'm not. I'm not an artist who makes projects. You know, and and I think that that's a really important thing because the Mona Lisa was not a fucking project. You know is that when did we start saying that we're doing projects? You know, and I don't, I don't understand, I think it's, 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 it's when, the, when the, there was a, I think there's a falseness, there's an insincerity about um, the thematic nature, what art's become, of saying, I'm making a work about gender, this is about race, this is about, you know, it's, it's, it's completely in, insincere, it's not, you know, and the people that kind of prop all of those things up are the theorists, are the art historians that, you know, that, that are completely barren for ideas, in, you know, because a real, a really good critic, a really good curator, a really good art historian goes out and finds, finds those, those works, you know, they don't just kind of stimulate the machine. I think historically the word project would use to avoid the art object, so you're creating object, but that's sort of the history, sort of in... in it's an art object, we're talking about artwork, an artwork, yeah. an artwork is not a fucking project, an artwork is something else, an artwork has got a different resonance to a fucking project, that's, that's, and that's, I'm a fucking puritan when it comes to art, I studied seven years for this shit, you know, I, I could have done medicine if I had the marks, but you know what I mean, this is serious business for me, you know, um, this is not, and I'm, I'm not talking business from a capital sense. This is like, this is serious work for me, you know. Um, yeah, anyway. Well, it's, a, it's also, yeah, I was thinking it's because a lot of um, early performance art, this was a big question that it, a performance is a performance and it shouldn't be documented. It exists as a live experience, right? But, but, that's, but, but then you're dealing with frequencies and vibrations. I mean, one of the things about this, this particular Mandela ball, I mean, uh, Chris and I uh, know each other very well from the disco floor, and this is a, a, essentially a disco ball. 
Um, you know, and it, this is also about frequencies. Of, uh, frequencies of vibration. The first time we, the, the, the word basically gave, gave birth to, to, to the idea behind it. Um, and um, I, I think, what, you know, and then when I was, when I was uh, starting the piece and sitting on the, on the steps, and I was contemplating it because it's, you know, as it's, as it's evolved, I've sort of lost some control. Um, I realized that there was a, also a reference to the large glass. And what I've always loved about um, uh, Duchamp was his, his al alchemic positioning with his work, you know. And this is essentially what, what art, art making is. We, we, we alchemists, you know. It's, it's about alchemy, you know. It's, we magicians, you know, that's really what it is. All right, I think, I think that's a good ending, maybe, <laughs> because that's a sign I got, I understood, so <laughs> if there's no other urgent question, which I don't see, so we thank you. There's a question. There is a Can question. One question. The last question, yeah. Quick ones. Is, yeah. Thank you. What I'm wondering is, um, I understand that you don't want your art to become history, to become a historical narrative. Um, of your own. So what I'd like to know is how can you empower young people now who are still going through perhaps the second or third part of the struggle against apartheid to put forth their own viewpoint through the arts and claim power that way? You know how that gets done? It's called a government. With a minister of, of uh, what's it, arts and culture who should be doing his fucking job. That, it's not my fucking job, seriously. I thought it was, it's not my fucking job. You know, artists are getting ex exploited to do workshops that actually qualified art, theorists, art, art therapists should be doing. You know, it's, seriously, it's not, I, I can't do it. I can't do it, I'm one fucking person. All I can do is make my work and I can be there in some form or shape, but, you know, at, at a governmental level, if these things are not in place, like education, you know, artists can't be expected to fill that void. It's fucking unfair. It's simply unfair. Most artists are starving, like literally fucking starving. I, I'm on the board of the National Arts Council in South Africa, and it's just shocking, like, how an artist will put down a list of materials, but won't put down their fucking daily food, right? You know what I mean? It's like you can starve to, man, come on, it's the 21st fucking century. This is unacceptable. It's uh, any, any kind of, any form of, of, of starvation in, in any place in the world is completely unacceptable. You know, uh, I'm not a social worker. I'm an artist. I'm not a politician. I'm an artist. You know, this is what I do and I do it really well. I can't give those answers. I know what should be done, but I can't fucking do it because I'm not in those positions and I don't want to be in those positions. All right. So we heard her. Thank you so much. Obviously, there's quite a difference in both of you. <laughs> and we won't settle that today. But I thank you very much. And I'm sure you keep going. And the same for Sam in your own way. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Sam.